All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, we are now live on YouTube. I've shared the link around on social media pages. I hope that people are tuning in and watching this. And of course, uh, this will be recorded on our YouTube um, channel for for the future. Uh, and, and now I'm hearing that we have a little feedback, so I'm gonna close that. Anyways, uh, we're moving forward and I have Jim Rollins here in the office with me. Uh, this is our director of public works here at the town of Winchester. And uh, also we have Bruce Stratford, our former director of finance, who's continuing to help us with this project uh, on a management level um, to make sure that you have as much information as you need to make informed decisions as we move forward. And, uh, and, and so that uh, hopefully we're making good quality decisions for our town. Um, so for those of you who are joining us tonight uh, for the first time, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to learn a little bit more about the 2022 infrastructure investment plan uh, that we've put together here uh, for, for your consideration. And for those of you, those of you who are uh, joining us again, um, thank you for coming back. I'm sure that you have some more questions and comments to share with us. Um, and for those of you who are on the Zoom conversation tonight, I encourage you as we go along, uh, or, and certainly at the end, we'll have time for questions and comments. Um, for those of you who are watching online, the Board of Selectmen wants to hear your questions and comments. You can send those. We'll talk about it a little bit more later on. But you can send those to my email address at townmanager at townofwinchester.org. Uh, and I will relay them to the board uh, thereafter. So, but let's let's actually get into the presentation here a little bit. I'm gonna share my screen and actually find the window where I have the presentation up. We have a few things going on at Town Hall right now. And, um, and infrastructure is a huge part of that, but it is, it is just a part. Hold on everybody, I'm not finding this for some reason. It's because I went to a different screen, there you go. All right, can everybody see that uh, full screen? Excellent, all right, I'm seeing a thumbs up from Bruce, so we're ready to get started. Um, so for those of you who have joined us before, uh, just a quick disclosure that this is a, a presentation that we've more or less given before. We have tried to make improvements to the presentation as we've gone along, uh, and, and we've tried to make sure that as much information is present as possible. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that a lot of this has been shared before. So we're glad to have you back. We're glad to hear, we're hoping to hear some more feedback from you. Um, but we just do want to make sure that, that you're not uh, misled. This is not additional, a lot of additional information about this project. Um, and let's talk about how we got here. So the state of the town's roadway infrastructure. Um, uh, for anybody who's lived here uh, for a, a while, you know what the town's infrastructure has been like in the past, what it is now, uh, and, and a little bit about what it's looked like to get from point A to point B. Uh, so this past December, on December 20th, uh, you know, staff that includes myself, Jim, uh, and Bruce, we presented information about the current state of the town's infrastructure. And since 20, the fiscal year 2016, which spans um, cal the end of calendar year 2015 and the beginning of calendar year 2016, uh, approximately $8.7 million has been spent on pay-as-you-go roadway improvements. Um, and that includes state and federal grants. Uh, that's about 51% of that total. So uh, half of about half of the $8.7 million uh, that, that we've identified came from state and federal grants and about the other half came from town money. And all of that's been spent on those pay-as-you-go road improvements. Uh, we Many roads, bridges, and sidewalks, catch basins, you name it. Um, they're in poor condition, and we need to make some more improvements. Uh, so given all of this information, the Board of Selectmen asked the town to prepare a presentation on what would it mean, what would it take for us to move at a faster pace um, to make some of these improvements. And that's really what this presentation is here. Um, so you can see on the screen, you're actually going to see these pie charts a couple of times tonight, and, and this is the first instance. On the left-hand side of your screen as you're watching, um, these are the pavement assessment uh, results that we obtained in 2016. The town engaged uh, with a, a private firm to conduct uh, an, a pavement assessment, um, and, and really these are the results that we found. So these are um, you know, classified by a PASER rating. Uh, and that stands for uh, pavement assessment, uh, something, something. And what it's really telling us, what we're trying to look at here, and actually I can use the mouse tonight and that's gonna be really helpful. So these blue slivers are referencing excellent. 
roads, roads that are in excellent condition. Uh, the green is referencing roads that are in good condition. Yellow is for fair, orange is for poor, and your red up here, the 2% on the left is failed roads. So uh, you can see that there's been, there were pretty extensive improvements that were made between just 2016 and 2019. You see that uh, the number of failed roads is halved. It goes from 2% to 1%. Um, you're talking about poor condition roads going from 50% to 35%. Um, good condition roads rising to 33% and a doubling of the number of excellent roads that we have all the way up to 8%. Um, that might seem like a small number, but for just three years, that's a lot of low hanging fruit that the town was able to tend to, to address. Um, and that made some, some significant improvements in that short amount of time. Um, but that really was low hanging fruit. And I know that Jim here is going to talk to you a lot more about that as we go along tonight. And I really can't emphasize that enough. As we get into some of these worse condition roads, it takes more money um, to, to fix up some of the roads. So I'll let Jim talk to you about what you're seeing on the screen now. So the bar graph that you're seeing right now is a representation of four different road treatments that are available for us to use on the roads. And if you put your attention to the, the three short bars, you know, the three on the left, you have hot in place recycling, you have shim and pave and mill and pave. Those are relatively inexpensive treatments that you can do on roads that are in, you know, fair, good, you know, and excellent conditions. The bar graph on the right is for reconstruction. That's what you need to do when a road completely falls off the edge and needs reconstruction versus just surface treatments. And you can see the cost, you know, quintuples uh, quite rapidly. So our goal is to try to keep these roads in a state of, you know, excellent, good and fair, where the maintenance and preventive maintenance treatments are inexpensive and not let them get into that bar graph to the right where they're super expensive. Um, the first, the first four years or so of our of our of our road work after our first assessment was identify the better roads, give them the preventive maintenance they need to keep them from deteriorating, and then you can start moving on to the worst roads and and building upon those. And that's the phase we're about to go into. We've done a couple of improvements on some small, really bad roads. But in order to make any real progress, we need some, some real funding, some real money. We can't do it out of our just general operating budget. Um, and that's kind of what this, this whole program is, is based upon is, is, is what's next. How do we start with those really nasty roads? And so uh, I'll talk to you a little bit more. Um, and, and our conservative estimate, we've all put our minds together uh, myself, Bruce, Jim, a few of our other colleagues who have worked closely on this, and our conservative estimate on what it would take to bring all of the roads up to either good or excellent condition right now would be at least $60 million, likely more. Um, and, and this is a comprehensive look at the roads. You know, we're not just talking about surface, we're talking about drainage, we're talking about, uh, you know, things that go along with, with making a solid roadway that's going to last the test of time, but it's significant. And um, Certainly, as we go along tonight, you're going to hear a lot of different numbers, but this one's important. Um, it, it, we need to make progress towards uh, taking a bite out of this, but we also recognize that it's not feasible for uh, residents of the town to take on a burden um, uh, related to $60 million all at once. So we're trying to make sure that any proposal that's coming to you as residents of the town is both trying to move forward and make sure that you have adequate infrastructure and roadways uh, to be able to drive on, to live on, uh, and to, to work and, and travel to work in all of these places. But we also want to balance it with what's affordable and what's feasible. Uh, and I'll take a minute just to talk a little bit about federal funding. Um, so federal funding is currently available for specific projects. Road work isn't eligible under a number of these programs. And that includes the American Rescue Plan Act, a lot of you heard and a lot of you have been following along in the news with the fact that uh, a lot of money was, was allocated to municipalities. Uh, $3.1 million was allocated to the town of Winchester through the American Rescue Plan Act. 
And there are very specific uses that, that are permissible for us uh, to put that money towards. And roadways, unfortunately, is not one of those uh, permissible uses. So we're not able to tap into some of those funds. Um, luckily, we are able to use it for some of our other infrastructure needs with water and sewer. Uh, and that all plays in uh, to a lot of the road work that we're hoping to be able to do and, and so forth, the investment that we're trying to make in our to overall infrastructure. But it's not usable for roads. Uh, the Build Back Better grants, um, they that's something that's eligible where uh, our COGS are eligible to apply on a regional basis to get some of these monies. And again, uh, it's not really focused on roadways and the coronavirus relief funds, uh, the CRF was not eligible for roads. Um, so the federal infrastructure bill, a lot of people have talked about this. A lot of folks have asked about it. It was recently signed into law that over a trillion dollars of investment uh, and most of that money, unfortunately, it's not gonna go to the local roadways. It's going to go to the state highways. It's gonna go to the federal highways. Um, and other major um, uh, high traffic corridors. Uh, so it's not likely to trickle down and really help out municipalities in a way that we would like to see. Um, so while we're going to, we're, we're already working, I know that we've attended many meetings, webinars to get information, to make sure that we have all of the info that we need to apply for those funds, the funds that are applicable to us. Um, it really makes a small piece of this pie. And, uh, and we need to have more town investment is the bottom line. Um, so the question is, how do we speed up the pace? And I'm gonna use an example. This is just uh, three different projects uh, that I'm going to be discussing right now. They're Holabird Avenue. This is a, a reconstruction uh, or, or a, a, a repaving of Holabird Avenue, uh, the Case Avenue Bridge and Oakdale Avenue. Um, so in the past five years, the town's invested an annual average of $716,000 in roadway improvements. That hasn't been even each year. It's actually increased a little bit each year, uh, but on an average, that's the number uh, that comes out. Uh, so for if you add those three projects up, Hollibird Ave, the Case Avenue Bridge, and Oakdale Avenue, those projects together cost $2.7 million to complete. Uh, so at that rate, we expect that it would take 3.8 years to finish off those projects. And that's without doing any other road work. And there's a lot of other road work to be done, right? I know that for those of you who are listening now or, or maybe later after this live stream is completed, um, you're thinking about the road in front of your house, the road that you take to get to work, the road that you take to get to the grocery store, anywhere that you might be trying to get to in and around town. Uh, and just focusing on three projects for 3.8 years doesn't seem very feasible. Um, the alternative is if we wanted to increase our investment and we wanted to take a faster approach, we, by borrowing the cost of those projects, could complete those three repairs in one year. Uh, that's feasible for us to do uh, administratively. We can take on uh, those logistics and uh, by having the money up front, we could take care of it in one year. Um, so, so the question really is what kind of investment is needed and from fiscal year 2016 to fiscal year 21, like I said, we've invested an average of $716,000. Um, at that rate, if you're talking about $60 million of investment that are needed to bring all roads up to good or excellent, a good or excellent rating, it would take 83 years to complete all of those improvements. And while we're doing that, while we're fixing up all of the fair, poor, and failed roads, all of the ones that are currently considered to be good or excellent would slide back and, and become failed. So we're not, we're not funding our roadways at a sustainable level. It's really important to know that. Um, and we have two different infrastructure investment options at our disposal, uh, depending on, on which way the town really wants to go. So there's pay as you go, which is really a form of what we're doing. Where every year we're putting money into the operating budget and, and some of it's going towards roads. Um, what we would do in this, in this avenue is increase the annual roadway improvement general fund allocation. It really doesn't allow for large projects to be completed at one time. You know, you've got some larger projects that might total a few million dollars to complete. And if you're only putting in, uh, you know, a little over a million, breaking up one project over two fiscal years really doesn't make sense. Um, it, it I, usually, I imagine it would end up costing more or the project would be delayed and, and there are complications that arise with that. Um, the funding could be eliminated or changed in any given year and progress can stall as a result of that approach, um, but there are no debt costs associated with it. On the flip side, bonding. Uh, bonding is the uh, when, when a town goes out and basically borrows money. Um, so it involves borrowing money to pay for these improvements. The debt is typically paid off over a 10 to 20 year period. 
Uh, it allows for some of those larger projects to be completed in a shorter period of time because you have all of that money up front and you can simply pay for it. Um, and it's a multi-year funding commitment. So we would be saying as a town, now we're going to invest in our roads. We're committed to this amount of money and we're willing to pay it going forward. Um, and I'm going to let Bruce Stratford, who's on the call here, um, talk to you a little bit more about what bonding entails uh, and, and why it's our recommendation. Thank you, Josh. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you. Um, uh, as we have looked at uh, the challenges ahead of us in terms of uh, making some significant additional investment in the roadways um, and the transportation infrastructure, um, we have uh, concluded that it, it, we ought to recommend to the town that we consider a municipal bond. The bonding allows us to um, borrow the money up front so we can compete some of the complete some of these larger projects. Um, it also commits the town to uh, completing uh, the projects that are included or described in um, in the referendum language that would be that would be approved by the town. Um, so in other words, you can't you are made a commitment to work on a particular project and see it through without the risk of uh, the priorities changing midstream with respect to the general fund um, appropriation that happens from year to year. Um, one of the um, opportunities here is that municipal borrowing rates uh, in the municipal market are at historic lows. And, um, uh, they're probably not going to remain at historical lows uh, for an extended period of time. So if we were to uh, get approval to borrow money on the municipal bond market, we could take advantage of those historically low interest rates. And the other thing that uh, this, um, this recommendation takes into account is, is that we can now uh, tackle some of those larger road projects and also include uh, allow the general fund uh, appropriation every year that does deal with uh, road work to tackle some of the smaller projects and the annual maintenance that's required uh, for the good roads that we have um, that we have in town and have been invested in in the last several years. So I think we can go to the next slide. So um, the question is, is what's a reasonable bonding level or borrowing level for the town of Winchester? Well, every year we get a, uh, the town issues financial statements that are audited and uh, the last audit uh, covers the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2021. And in that report, we, we uh, disclose the statutory debt limits for the town. A debt uh, borrowing levels are governed by state statute. And for the town of Winchester, as of the last fiscal year end, uh, our statutory debt limit is $54.5 million for general purpose debt. And road work is considered general purpose debt. We currently have 6.2 million outstanding of general purpose debt, uh, consisting of two items. One is $5 million that we've been using in, uh, for interim financing of the Hinsdale School renovation. And, uh, and then we also have $1.2 million left outstanding on a bond issue from um, about 2005, which will uh, we'll finish paying that off in a couple of years. So um, we, have, we have four, when you subtract the 6.2 million from the 54.5 million, we, that leaves us with $48.3 million available for the town to use as a borrowing authority. It's kind of like your uh, credit card limit, um, less what you're carrying on your, on your current balance. So 48.3 million is, is our maximum borrowing authority for general purpose debt. Another thing we have to consider is what our annual debt service would be for any level of debt that we borrowed. Debt service consists of repayment of principal and then the interest 
uh, attendant to that debt over the borrowing term. And that appropriation must come every year out of the general fund budget. And currently our general fund budget um, has about um, a little bit less than $400,000 of um, debt service relating to the uh, $1.2 million outstanding um, that we have that will mature in a couple of years. So uh, if we were to acquire or, or enter into new bond uh, bonding debt, then we would have to consider what would be the additional uh, debt service that would have to be financed by the general fund budget every year. For example, if we were to borrow $10 million uh, over 20 years at 4.5%, which has been an historical borrowing rate for the town in past years, our current $1.2 million carries an interest rate of about 4.2% then the debt service would be $736,000 per year. That's the amount of money that would have to be included in the general fund uh, budget as an appropriation for debt service. Uh, another example, if the town were to borrow $18 million and do that over 20 years, again, at the 4.5% interest rate, that would require annual debt service of $1,325,000. That would be the amount that would have to be included in the general fund budget each year as debt service for the next 20 years. So those are some things to think about uh, when we uh, consider uh, the opportunity to borrow money in the municipal bond market for road infrastructure. Okay, well, thank you, Bruce. So uh, I, I'm just gonna say a few words about this and then I'm gonna turn it over to the Director of Public Works, Jim Rollins. Um, we, we had to think, of course, about priorities, right? Um, we have a lot of roads that need attention. We have a lot of roads that are in failed or poor condition. Um, and with $60 million of work uh, to get done and, and knowing that we aren't going to reasonably go out and we can't legally under the statutes uh, bond for $60 million all at once. Uh, we've had to make, uh, you know, we've had to put some thought into what are the projects that we want to work on first and what is going to have to either be addressed through uh, the operating budget separately or what is going to have to be addressed in a later uh, bond issuance or, or other investment. So these are some of the priorities uh, that we considered you know, number one is the comprehensive condition of the roadway. We're thinking about safety conditions. We're, we're focused on grants and finding them wherever we can. And we'll talk a little bit more about what kinds of grants may be available to us later on. Um, you know, the total expense of the project, I've already addressed this one uh, a number of times, but we're thinking about what are those larger projects that are just too big to address in one operating budget uh, and making sure that we're addressing those uh, through this bond about geographic diversity. We'll show you a map a little later on that shows the different areas of town and, and the fact that we're trying to address issues that exist in different neighborhoods. Um, connectivity to essential facilities, the, the amount of the traffic that passes over the roadway, we're trying to tend to roads that are trafficked more first and address some of the smaller, uh, less trafficked roads uh, late, a little bit later on. Um, synergies with other work. I'll let Jim address that. And of course, project readiness. We have a lot of things that are ready to go. Um, certainly Jim and, and uh, Bart Clark, who can't be here with us on this call at this moment, um, have been working diligently uh, and, and for years at this point to make sure that projects are always moving forward, ready to go. Uh, and we have a number of those that are ready at this point to move forward if funding became available. And, and we want to make sure that we're tending to those uh, as priorities too. So Jim, do you have a little bit more to, to tack onto this? So yeah, um, Josh really hit on the high points to this. Um, and I just direct your attention to the top bullet point. Everything we're doing now is really related to road condition. If, if a road was in excellent condition, we wouldn't have to be seeking funds to do big road projects. So that's really what's driving it. Um, all the other considerations, you know, road safety, that's just liability to the town. We don't want to put ourselves in a position where, you know, we're liable for some disaster caused by a bad road. Uh, the grants, 
you know, later on, we will touch on how we're trying to uh, leverage some grants to make better use of our money. Um, spreading the, the work around different parts of town, um, project readiness. Um, you know, like Josh said, we've spent some time putting together a list of, of projects, getting the engineering um, started, completed, and ready to go to bid. Um, but the second to last bullet point is synergies with other work. Um, <clears throat> you're going to notice that some of the roads that we have proposed aren't necessarily the worst roads. Um, but we may be doing a better road only because there's a water main being put in or a gas main being put in. <clears throat> so if the road's being dug up anyway, we're going to do our drainage improvements and paving. And that's why it tended to leapfrog over a road that <clears throat> the rest of us might think is more worthy. So all these conditions were kind of thrown together and you know, thrown out like a bunch of dice and we just picked the best combinations that we thought we could afford and that impacted the most people on the most, you know, most high volume roads. So I guess we can move on to the actual uh, list. And so what you have here is a list of the roads by region. You know, we said we, we wanted some geographic diversity. So we've got the west side of town, and you can read the, uh, the roads that are up there. We'll leave the slide up plenty long for that. Um, we have streets in the, in the main core of downtown. We have streets on the east side of Winstead, uh, roads up in Winchester, and some stuff up around Highland Lake. So we've, we've tried to spread it out in kind of the main regions of town. And um, now we'll show another slide. It's gonna be the same roads. It's just listed in a different, a different format. Um, year one through five. And again, I'm not gonna read each road or go over each year by year, um, point by point, but I will touch on year one because it's pretty representative of how we came up with the roads, why we chose you know, the order we did. Um, so we'll take Case Avenue. Uh, the water department is, so let me start, the gas company put a gas main in last year and the water department's putting a water main in this year. <clears throat> Each of them are required to do some paving. So since they're doing their, their paving, we want to touch up the sidewalks, the storm drains, and the road base, and so forth. So we're all leveraging our money into one really good project. Uh, Halliburton Avenue is another example. We're, ex we're moving up the hill from where Halliburton Avenue Bridge was done a few years ago. There's a water main being put in there. So since that's being opened up for a water main, we want to redo all the drainage because that's failed and that's a liability issue. We've actually had uh, sinkholes form from that. Indian Meadow Drive, the town has worked on the drainage for the, on and off for the last couple of summers. And there's maybe one more uh, crossover pipe to do and then it's actually ready for pavement. Um, we added uh, Indian Meadow Drive, Marshall Street and Colebrook Road all together because they're, they're in the same geographic region and we'll get economies of scale by doing them all together. Uh, Whiting Street, you're gonna see phase two. That's because phase one is scheduled uh, because we're leveraging a grant uh, and that's scheduled to go forward this spring. So all of these were leveraged with other sources of funding and they were timed appropriately because of other things that were going on. So that's kind of a representation of how we, we made the list, how we prioritized them and why they're in certain, uh, certain years. You know, so I'll jump up to year five, you'll see Newfield Road. Um, we're, we're probably gonna be looking at that as maybe getting some lot zip money, which is the same money we're using in year one on Hollibird Avenue. We're only able to get, um, I'm sorry, this is for Lake Street. We're only able to get that money about once every five years. So, we couldn't put Lake Street ahead. Only certain roads in town are eligible for that money. It's gotta be a collector road, which Hollibird, Lake Street, and you know, just a, a couple of other roads are even available for. So again, it's just kind of an explanation of how these roads got picked, why they got picked, and, and the timing behind it. Next. So this is the, the map that Josh referenced earlier, and it shows visually a representation of the work being done 
in different parts of town. The way the map is situated, it looks more like a, a North Winstead and a South Winstead, but it, it you know, we kind of labeled it as East and West because just because of the orientation to the center of town. But anyway, uh, the work proposed you're going to see is in two different colors. Um, the, the kind of the orange color is work that's in the town bond. And then the other work in blue is utility sponsored. That's gas, uh, water company, um, and so forth. Now, the stuff in orange, that's 9.47 miles of road. That's 12% of all the roads we have in town. So this is making a, a pretty big impact on quite a few miles of road, as well as some really highly trafficked roads like Newfield Road, Elm Street, um, Marshall Street, uh, Halliburt Avenue, uh, Case Avenue, uh, Lake Street. This is, you know, this is hitting some very highly trafficked roads with a lot of buried utilities, which is why each of the roads are so expensive. Okay, next uh, slide. So as we showed in that bar graph earlier, we showed, you know, some less expensive road treatments. Um, this slide here represents what we plan on doing next year, which is one level below those road treatments. This is absolutely pure preventive maintenance. This is crack sealing, which is kind of those black lines, black curvy lines you see on the pavement and chip seal, which is the, the really tiny rocks that are sprinkled over an oil and stuck to the surface of the road. The sole purpose of this is to, is, is to slow the deterioration of the good roads or the, you know, the excellent or the good roads so that they don't deteriorate to a, a, a poor or a fair or a failed road. And if we can keep these with a very inexpensive treatment from deteriorating, then we don't have to spend so much money on that, that big bar graph, which could be five times as much as, as doing treatments like this, probably 10 times more effective than doing treatments like a, like a chip seal or a crack seal. All right, next slide. Uh, I'll, I'll jump back in here just, just for a minute uh, and talk about the comparison. You know, we'll, we'll talk about the current practice again versus bonding, and we're going to use the roads that you just saw uh, listed as the example. So if the town chooses to stay the current course and not increase any investment in roadways, um, and it wanted to take on the projects that we just listed to you, it would take 21 years to complete those priority, those priority road projects. Um, and that's without any of the other maintenance work being done that Jim just discussed. Um, so our goal, instead of waiting to 2043 uh, to see all of that work done, uh, our goal is to complete the work in five years through bonding. Uh, and the hope, yes, is to keep up uh, all of the money that we're able to put into preventative maintenance to make sure uh, that we're putting ourselves in a better position to not need to go to such extreme bonds and not put ourselves in such a corner with infrastructure really far down the road. Um, so this is a long-term investment in our town's future, um, and I think it's a good one. Uh, I will touch on a few non-roadway projects for consideration now. And, um, you know, while we're going out to bond, it's not every day that a town of our size goes out to borrow money. Um, so while we're already going out to the market, uh, it's important for us to consider what are some of those other projects that really need our time and attention, and what are some of the things that are going to make a big impact uh, here in town if we're able to go out and borrow funds for them. Um, so I'll jump right in. The first one is uh, the, that I'll talk about is essential sidewalks. Um, the town, if you walk around uh, in, here in downtown Winstead, you know that there are some sidewalks that are in great condition and there are some sidewalks where there are even trip hazards uh, and, and areas that are not easy to traverse. So uh, the current town law and this is both in the town's charter and in the town ordinances, states very clearly that it is the abutting property owner that is responsible for the upkeep, repair, maintenance, uh, and clearing in, in the wintertime of all sidewalks. Um, this is being uh, followed in some areas, and there are some areas with sidewalks where it very clearly hasn't been followed. This is the rule that hasn't been uh, tended to. Um, and we're at a point in time, and I, I'm not going to speak for the Board of Selectmen because this is a policy conversation that they need to have, 
uh, and that they they are interested in having. Uh, but the bottom line is that the Board of Selectmen is interested in reviewing the policies uh, that are on the books right now for sidewalks to make sure that whatever is out there for sidewalks is fair, uh, that it's working for everybody. And one of the things that uh, that we've recognized all collectively is that there are some essential corridors, uh, essential areas where sidewalks are vital to the success of our downtown core, our, our businesses in the downtown area, to uh, our health and safety in terms of making sure that they're connecting us and the people who are in the downtown area to emergency shelters, uh, and also necessary for uh, the to, to help make our schools thrive. Um, we have a lot of folks uh, and, and hopefully even more will take advantage of this opportunity if the sidewalks are fixed up, who walk to school. We wanna make sure that people, uh, and especially our kids who are downtown, everybody's safe and able to um, move and traverse easily. Um, so for $600,000, um, we could, my understanding is over 4,000 linear feet of sidewalk could be completed. Um, that's kind of a conservative estimate. Um, and this is a map, and I'm gonna let Bruce Stratford speak to this a little bit. Um, he's really uh, the, the sidewalk guru who's looked into this uh, on behalf of, of our group who put together uh, this presentation. This isn't something that we've presented in earlier editions of uh, this presentation. This is something that we actually uh, just finished and put into the presentation today, but I'll, I'll let Bruce tell you a little bit more about what you're looking at. Uh, thank you, Josh. Uh, <clears throat> so this is a, a map of uh, downtown Winstead, uh, the large uh, uh, road that runs uh, from uh, the lower left hand, or excuse me, lower right hand corner to the upper left hand corner is Route 44. And uh, it's orange. And then we've highlighted uh, a blue section, which uh, we consider a, an essential sidewalk. Um, the other streets, uh, just stay where you are on that, where you have the arrow there. The other streets are designed to, that we consider essential, link Main Street to the schools. The first being Spencer. If you go up all the way up Spencer, you'll, that'll take you to the Exploration School. And if you come back down Spencer, you'll be right there at the Hinsdale School and along Hinsdale Avenue. And then you come to Williams Avenue, which takes you up to the Gilbert School. And then uh, continuing back along Hinsdale East, that takes you over to Elm Street and to the Pearson School. And so um, Elm Street runs from the Pearson School straight down to uh, Main Street. We consider that an essential sidewalk because uh, it links and um, you know takes you right through the middle of town uh, up to the Pearson School. And then from Pearson School East on Wetmore down to um, North Main Street. Uh, we consider essential um, uh, a, a sidewalk essential street and then going south uh, along North Main Street to the west of East End Park down to Main Street. Uh, that's also considered essential. And then, then, then there's a section that goes uh, south of Route 44. That's Rowley Street up to the ball fields and then along Willow all the way over to Bridge Street and, um, and back uh, to where it meets with Elm. Now, these are what we consider the essential sidewalks. It provides, um, if we have good sidewalks on these streets, then people can travel safely and easily to the schools, to the uh, uh, main uh, commercial corridor along Main Street, and then over to the recreation opportunities uh, the ball fields and um, and the recreation center there on Rowley Street. So some of these sidewalks are included in uh, the, some of the existing projects. For instance, Lower Elm Street. Um, that section is part of an, uh, a road work that was one of our projects and uh, that project will include uh, getting the sidewalks in good shape. And then everything that's on south of Main Street, uh, the Bridge, Willow, and Raleigh Street, uh, that's part of a, a grant application we made on the Community Challenge Grant to um, assist us in upgrading the sidewalks along there and of, uh, improving uh, pedestrian access to that part of town. So, 
Uh, the six hundred thousand dollars that we're proposing in the in the in the bonding package is designed to assist us in getting the sidewalks north of Main Street in good condition. It doesn't mean replacing every um, every uh, piece of sidewalk there, but it's getting the sidewalks so that they're in good shape, um, fixing the ones that are broken, um, the ones that have trip hazards. Uh, and then instructing the residents along those corridors how they can maintain it so that we have good, good conditions on the sidewalks. So that's um, that's an up, this is a this slide is an upgrade from our pre uh, earlier presentations, but it's in response to a question that we had: which sidewalks are you talking about? So we hope that uh, this clarifies what our vision is with respect to investing in the sidewalks. And the $600,000 is essentially a start on, uh, on getting uh, these sidewalks in good condition. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Bruce. You're welcome. So, so there are two other, I, I mentioned there are three uh, non-roadway projects that we wanna talk about. I'm gonna go through the other two um, uh, right now. So the first is Highland Lake drainage. And you'll note that there is some road work that we wanna do in and around Highland Lake. Uh, but the bottom line is that the entire way around Highland Lake right now, uh, the drainage system that's that's there in certain places is not in good condition. You can see a picture right here uh, that was taken on uh, West Lake Street. And uh, and there are other places where there isn't enough drainage or, or there just doesn't appear to be drainage at all. Uh, and the bottom line is we need to make sure that we're taking care of the natural resource that we have that is Highland Lake. Um, we're really fortunate right now. We have one of the largest natural lakes in Connecticut right here in our backyard. That's a wonderful thing. It's wonderful for recreation. Uh, it's wonderful for the people who have the opportunity to live there too. But we have it in really good condition right now. Um, and a lot of lakes around Connecticut are in failing condition, have to have some state assistance right now uh, to, to kind of replenish their health. And we're in a position right now where we can protect our lake's health before it ever gets bad. Um, but in order to do that, we need to make sure that we don't have a lot of runoff going into our lake that's carrying sediment, that's carrying a number of other nutrients and, and pesticides and fertilizers and everything else that comes with um, runoff at that going right into the lake. We need to make sure that it's going into a drainage system that's been engineered, that's been well thought out, that's bringing the water, uh, treating it properly if necessary, and bringing it to a proper location for discharge. Um, so in order to do that, we need to, we need to investigate what that's going to take. We need to put money towards it. It's going to require a lot of engineering um, and it's going to require a lot of time and attention. So in order to start on this project, we're proposing that a million dollars be put towards uh, the Highland Lake drainage project. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the fire department ladder truck. And I'll start off by saying, yes, the Winstead Fire Department does currently have a ladder truck. Uh, that's what's pictured um, on the screen right now. Uh, but Winchester has many buildings, uh, Winstead specifically has many buildings that are at least three stories tall. And the town has a ladder truck to help put out and control fires uh, where they need to have uh, an aerial view uh, to best tend to them. Um, the, my understanding uh, is that the hydraulics on the current ladder truck are in a, in a state where they're in need of replacement. This vehicle's at the end of its useful life. Um, and while we are reviewing all of our, all different opportunities, uh, there, there have been some questions about this in the at past presentations. We're reviewing all opportunities to acquire a truck at a lesser price. Uh, but right now, our best judgment tells us that in order to obtain a new truck that is going to be reliable, that's going to be able to respond to calls as they come in, help save lives, help save property, help preserve uh, our buildings, our downtown, um, we're talking about a $1.4 million investment. Um, and, and that's a, a significant investment, but it's also something that we want to make sure we have here in town. We don't want to have to wait 15, 20 minutes for a truck to get up here from Torrington uh, because they invested and we chose not to. We want to make sure that we're responding quickly, that we're saving those lives, and that we're protecting as many of, of our old aging buildings as possible. Um, so those, those map out the three different non-roadway projects uh, that were um, that were were proposing be included in a, this proposed bond. And now you can see on the screen in front of you, all of the different projects that would be funded. 
uh, under this proposal. So it's $15.3 million in road work uh, as represented by the first five categories that you see, um, the different locations around town, and then another $3 million in non-road projects. And again, that's $600,000 in sidewalks, that's a million dollars in Highland Lake drainage, and that's $1.4 million in the fire department ladder truck for a total sum of $18.3 million. Um, that's very close to the number that you saw Bruce reference towards uh, the beginning of this presentation. Um, he, he referenced towards the beginning that, uh, you know, if, if you borrowed for $18 million, it would be a little over $1.3 million that you'd need to include in the annual operating budget as debt service. Um, so he's done that calculation and that's, that's given that there are a lot of givens in that. That means that that's a, there's a given that we have a 4.5 uh, percent borrowing rate, and, and there's a chance that we might be able to get a lower rate at, if we are able to borrow right now. So um, we tried to take a conservative approach and let you know what the impact on the budget is going to be. You're looking a little over $1.3 million uh, in, in that debt service for, um, for a, a project of this size. Um, so the impact of the improvements, uh, Jim, I, I would like to have you touch on these. I, I told you all that you'd see these pie charts come on back. Yeah, so the first two of these three pie charts you've already seen, the 2016 assessment, which showed 52% of our roads were failed or poor. Um, and then the improvements we made um, over three years, the 2019 assessment, we changed that from 52% to 36% of fair or poor and failed roads. Our goal going forward with this you know, project that we're proposing is to drop that to 25%. Um, that's, that's a pretty big step. And I think it's a, I think it's a really good distance traveled for the amount of money that we're going to, you know, we're hoping to invest. Um, and that's what we we're trying to look at, you know, slide one, you see 50% of the, the roads are in really bad shape. We're going to cut that in half. So I think over the course of this, this would be a, a grand total of about a 10 year span. I think that's pretty darn good um, for a small town like us to make that improvement, seeing as how the prior investment in roads was near zero for a couple of decades. So um, we're proposing to try to change the direction of that lack of attention to roads, uh, which is what got us here and try to invest in something that'll get us out of this mess. So there you have it. Uh, you know, all of this has really been said uh, up to this point, but you're talking about town roads. If we take this investment, we're hoping that they're and, and we're aiming to make them safer and easier to traverse. Uh, we're aiming to make sure that there's a positive image of Winstead and Winchester, helping to attract new residents, new businesses, um, and, and helping just to create that positive community spirit. Um, we're working towards a long term goal of, of minimizing our need for, for things just like this, right? Uh, we, we don't want to put ourselves in a corner in the future of having an infrastructure crisis where we have $60 million uh, of, of uh, expenditures that we need to take on in order to improve all of the work. Um, so we need to chip away at it and get ourselves to a point where we can manage everything uh, within our general operating budget. Um, we're talking about uh, hopefully improving property values in the areas where we're making these improvements. Everything's going to look pretty good. Uh, and some of these non-road projects are going to help improve pedestrian safety, um, help provide cleaner water for Highland Lake and, uh, and protect that natural resource. And of course, improve uh, safety uh, when it comes to, to issues related to fire. The big question I'm sure on everybody's mind right now, if you're watching this, whether it's now, later, at home, um, if you're on the Zoom call live here, is where is my road? Um, and for those of you who have your road, the road that you actually live on in this plan, um, uh, congratulations. I, I hope that you're excited. I hope uh, that, that you will uh, stay excited about this proposal. Um, but what I wanna say to everybody is uh, we have to take, we have to start somewhere, right? Uh, this is a portion, this is just about a third, is, actually it's, it's closer to a quarter of the amount of roads that we need to get through in order to fix all of the failed and poor roads. Um, it's about a quarter of that $60 million uh, investment that we need to make in our roadway. So there's a long way to go, but there's so much good that can come from this uh, and, and that will come from this. So, and if your road isn't on it, I hope that you're seeing 
that the road that you take to get to work, the road that you take to get to your friend's house, your neighbor's house, uh, whatever the case might be, I hope that you're seeing um, that there is an impact, that there's going to be a positive impact on your experience here in town, on uh, your family and friends when they come to visit you, when they come into town, and certainly our businesses and so forth. Um, some of the smaller roads that are not listed here may be able to be repaved as a part of the normal operating budget. We can't make any guarantees about when that's going to happen. All of that depends on, and we're going through that budget process right now for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, all of it depends on uh, a lot of moving pieces and parts. It depends on how much other departments and the schools are requesting in terms of budgets. It depends on how much uh, the taxpayers are willing to uh, fund in any given year. But we're going to do our best as funding is available to uh, take care of some of those smaller roads. Other roads are going to have to be addressed by future investment plans. That's just a reality. Uh, we can't, we don't want to overburden people all at once, but there will have to be some future conversations about when other roads uh, come up and, and are, are addressed. So we have to start somewhere. I hope you all agree that this is a great first step. Um, Bruce, would you like to talk a little bit about the bonding timeline? Yes, thank you. So, um... As we spoke about these projects going over a, a five-year uh, period, um, one of the uh, opportunities we have is, is to schedule, if, if the bond package is approved at referendum, that the, um, uh, we would work with a, um, a financial advisor to plan the borrowing of the $18.3 million, if that's the number, uh, over um, perhaps three different um, events, uh, funding events, because um, otherwise you would end up borrow, obtaining all $18 million at once. And because we can't be working on all these projects in year one, that you would have money that wouldn't be necessarily being used. Um, it would be, it could be invested, but uh, the, uh, investment opportunities may be limited. So, but we have some flexibility. We can decide at the time that uh, we go for borrowing, whether or not to go for all of it at once or just separate it into uh, different funding events, perhaps even three funding events of $6 million each, in which case you would have the money available uh, to do the projects that needed to be done over the, those two years and then we would borrow again in two years when we were ready to work on the next um, uh, series of projects. So the, the, the uh, advantage of separating the, um, uh, the borrowings um, from each other allows us to reduce the amount of required debt service in each year of, uh, uh, of the general fund uh, budget. So then, in other words, the burden of paying back the, uh, um, the debt would not be as great in the earlier years. But again, we have the opportunity to decide this at the end after a referendum approval for this bond issue. And we do have flexibility to borrow in what we would consider to be the smartest and most appropriate way for the town and the taxpayers and the projects that would be funded. So that's uh, pretty much it. It's, it's, it's a, an opportunity to tailor our uh, bonding um, requirements to the needs of the town based on uh, the projects and the, uh, the taxpayers' uh, abilities. So just wanted to point that out is that we do have some opportunities for flexibility here. Absolutely, thank you. And um, you know, I'll just share with you a little bit about what the next steps are here um, and, and our communication plan too. So this is a part of, this is actually our last step, our last plan step, I should say. Um, certainly there's room to have more informational sessions if there's a demand for it in the public. So uh, if, if you really feel like you're somebody, you know, you're watching this later, you feel like you could benefit from uh, have, attending an in-person meeting. Certainly, I recommend that you come and you attend a Board of Selectmen meeting and give uh, some public comment there uh, about the proposed plan. Um, they certainly, they always welcome feedback. I'm sure that they would be happy to hear from you in that venue. 
And if there's enough of a demand for additional um, in-person or, or um, live events just like this where we can talk to you about the plan, we're happy to make that happen. Uh, but this is recorded. This is on YouTube. It can be reviewed there, and we're going to have a link to it on our website. And an informational web page has been launched. That's townofwinchester.org slash infrastructure plan. And that includes this presentation, video recordings of our other presentations, uh, detail sheets for each of these projects. Um, and between uh, Jim Rollins here and uh, Bart Clark, who, who's our project administrator who can't be on the call today, especially uh, Bart's put in countless hours uh, to to these detail sheets to make sure that you have as much information as you would like about the different individual projects that we've listed. Um, so I recommend go online, learn more about those, dive into the detail sheets if you have some questions. We also have a frequently asked questions page um, and, and as we receive questions, we'll post more answers there. Uh, certainly we have you know kind of a preliminary few now and, and that will expand. Um, but there's so much information online. I hope that we've shared a lot of information with you here tonight. And if you have other questions, uh, well, I'll get to that in just a minute, how you can reach out to us. Um, and uh, an informational mailer is being developed that's going to be sent to all Winchester and Winstead residents about the proposed plan. And around April 18th, the town has to, the, the Board of Selectmen needs to decide whether this is moving forward or not. And in order to move forward, um, the Board of Selectmen has to decide to move this to town meeting and the town meeting then would vote to move this to a referendum. Ultimately, this is going to be your decision, uh, our decision as, as taxpayers, as people who live here in town. Um, and we're going to have an opportunity to vote on the plan and decide if we wanna go ahead and support it or see if it needs amendment. So in the meantime, like I said, we want your feedback. Um, certainly those of you who are here on the, on the Zoom call live, I know there are just a few of us, but uh, it's good to have you here. We're happy to hear your comments now. If you're somebody who's watching this later or you're watching uh, live on YouTube, you can email comments uh, to townmanager at townofwinchester.org. I'll receive those. I will pass them along to the Board of Selectmen. They can be read into uh, the minutes of a Board of Selectmen meeting if you'd like. Um, and to learn more, you can ask your questions now or you can go online uh, to townofwinchester.org slash infrastructure plan. Um, you know, that concludes our, our presentation tonight. So I thank you all for for being here, uh, for being a great audience. Um, like I said, we're here to answer your questions should you have them. And for anybody who's there online, please don't forget, email me at townmanager at townofwinchester.org. Then I'm happy to pass along your comments and answer more questions. Now, who here on the call tonight has a question or a comment to share with the, the several of us? I know we have a couple selectmen here. Thank you for being here. And, uh, and we also have a few members of the public that are joining us tonight. Well, if I may, I'd like to uh, just thank you for having the meetings and there. It's very informative. I appreciated learning about the process, the steps it takes to get somewhere, to get it off the ground, go through the proper channels and things. And I think it sounds like a great, great plan, great plan. So I've uh, learned a lot in the last couple of years and it sounds like a real good plan. So excellent. Thank you very much and have a nice sure. night. Yeah, you too. Thank you for saying so. And uh, Sandy, I, I saw that you were looking to make a comment of some kind, I think. And sorry, you're you're muted right now. It's okay, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, Sandy. Does that unmute me? Yes, it does. Okay. No, I was just gonna say that to anybody who drives on the Winstead Rose knows that it's long overdue. And it's great that you've taken on this project. Uh, it's a sizable amount of money that you'll be borrowing. Um, is there any expectation what the mill rate increase might be for the, the citizens? You know, I can let uh, Bruce and Jim chime in on this a little bit more, but the bottom line is there are a lot, like I said before, there are a lot of moving pieces. We're waiting to hear on what the increase requests are going to be from Gilbert School, from Winchester Public Schools, from the town. Um, and, and we're also waiting to hear about some possible tax changes with the state. So depending on all of those things, uh, it could be a very different number. We're going to do our best to keep it as low as possible. And once we calculate what the mill rate increase is going to be, if there's going to be an impact, um, we're going to post that information. We're going to let you know. Um, so I, I don't mean to dodge the question, but oh, no, that's, that's, that's something that's we're working on very clearly. Yep. Um, the other thing is, um, 
Is there any expectation that the state will come up with any kind of programs in the next few years that would pay a percentage of all these um, improvements? Yeah. So we don't know the answer to that, but with a lot of the infrastructure money out there that or at least that they're talking about being out there, we're hoping that some of that gets diverted to the municipalities. Um, early indications are that you may see it in the form of existing programs that are being enhanced. Um, one of the programs that I've heard of is, the, is a bridge program where they used to pay 80% of the bridge cost. They may raise that to 100%. Um, so I think you're going to see it in more, more things like that rather than just here's a pile of money and, you know, use it for projects that are on your list. But that's just my extrapolation of what I've heard and what I'm, what I'm expecting. So that's as good as I can give you. Okay. And then my last question would be when you, when you start working on these roads, um, Will you be closing the entire road? Will you be leaving a lane open while you're working on it and do half and half? Or how do you think that's going to work? Just curiosity. So typically that would be up to the contractor's discretion. When they bid a job, they bid it according to how, how they can do it in the most cost-effective manner. Some of the times that's going to mean closing all of a road, part of a road, um, so we don't have, if, if there was something that we had to keep open, we could make that part of a, a bid specification. Um, but it's, again, a lot of that's out of our control and each project is going to be a little different. So I hate to answer it in more than just at general terms. It, it was just curious because with Hollibird Avenue, you have a fire station there. So, um, would that just put them out of service during the entire construction phase of Hollibird Avenue? No. So typically, even when we do a road closure, um, we have to notify all of the emergency, you know, whether it's fire, police, ambulance, that's part of a road closing permit. You know, we, we notify them so they know what's going on, which roads they can take and which ones they can't. Um, Hollibird Avenue, the vast majority of that work is going to be uphill of the firehouse. Um, and they, they'll be able to get in and out of there at all times. You know, if, if there's going to be a time where they won't be able to get in and out, they'll be notified so that they can get a fire truck and stage it outside of the building. Um, but it's, you know, they try to, yeah, emergency, you know, places like ambulance, barns, uh, fire stations, hospitals, medical centers, they, they kind of have to keep those open residences and businesses, they'll try to keep access from one direction or another, but probably not both at all times. So it's, every project's different. The, um, right directly across from the firehouse on the, um, I don't know if that's the south side, I don't know, west side. Um, okay. There's been several sinkholes, well, you know that, where you've had to come in there and patch them and put diamond plate to, to cover some of the holes. So that's directly across from the firehouse. So one would think that uh, even though most of it will be up of that, I would think that most of Hollibird Avenue would need to be done right down to where they did the bridge. Yeah, exactly. The, all the storm drains from where they stopped the, the paving at the bridge mm -hmm. um, all the way to the top where Florence Street is, um, all the drainage is being reconstructed. It's, it's, it's at the 90% design phase right now. And but yeah, like I said, if they have to, you know, impact the road right in front of the firehouse, they they'll get the fire trucks out of there ahead of time and then put them back in after after the fact. And so yeah, that, that shouldn't be a concern. And has any of this gone out to um, engineers yet, or you're not doing that until you get the approval at a town meeting? Yeah, no, we have um, not, the engineering for Hollibird is ninety percent done. Um, the engineering for Elm Street is closer to 100% done. That's just waiting on bid documents. Um, the water mains on Hollibird that precede the drainage and road work is in engineering right now. That's, that's actually out to bid. That bid's already been awarded. Um, so, and that's paid for, again, we're leveraging water and water money for that. Um, they've already got the funding for that. So that's going ahead regardless of the bond. 
Um, but once the water lines are in, then we want to do the drainage so we don't have those sinkholes. Um, we have similar sinkholes on uh, Oakdale, which is why that's also on the list. So, yeah, so you're right. There's a there's an order of operations that needs to be followed, and we've done as much of that as we can without jumping the gun before the public authorizes it. Um, and let's you know, every all of these projects have to be done. So any of the design work we've put into it so far will get utilized in some way or shape or form at some point. Um, and we're just trying not to overextend ourselves prematurely. So that's why nothing, nothing for the road bonding work has been put to bid yet. Um, but the engineering and bid documents for a lot of it are nearly ready. Well, that's great. Well, thank you. I know you put a lot of hard work into this and it'll be a great asset and a great improvement to the town. So. Thank, Thank you. you. Again. So, Josh, can I just address some of a couple of your questions, Sandy? Um, the roads, the projects that are included in our uh, fifteen point three million dollars, those those five different lists. Um, some of those projects qualify for uh, state assistance already. In fact, every one of the bridges um, on there, we have three bridge projects, and they're already. Um, we've already gotten commitments from the state bridge programs to assist in that. Some of it is 50% funding from the state. Some of it is 80% funding. Um, so, but the total amount of um, uh, grants that we, that are related to those projects is just about $2.7 million. So we're putting up, we have to put up $15.3 million. We're getting, when we do that, we qualify for another $2.7 million. So this is gonna run almost um, $18 million in road work alone. So yes, we are get, we're taking advantage of programs that, have, that are in place. And Jim did some of this application work four years ago in order to get this money in place so that we could do these larger projects. And there are other things in the future that we will include uh, he mentioned that he'll be looking for some assistance on Lake Street uh, on a lot of grant, but it takes it takes uh, some time in order to qualify to do another lot set project. So we are taking advantage of as many uh, state funding opportunities as as we can. Um, related to uh, the question about what the mill rate impact is, um, when the town um, when those selectmen uh, decide to go to um, a town meeting for this, the information that will be presented at the town meeting will include the mill rate impact for this project. And so it's, it's information that we know that needs to be part of the decision for every taxpayer. Uh, we just don't have good information to, you know, to give you now it's still a, a number that's floating and it, a lot of it depends on where the town's grand list comes out this year and the assessors have done most of the work but they have another piece of their work that still has to happen that's the um, board of assessment appeals which happens generally in the march time frame so they will certify the the grand list that will be um the basis of the mill rate that goes into the next year's budget uh, by the end of March, early April. And we will have that information to put into our calculation. So when we do go to town meeting and all the materials that will uh, presented be presented prior to town meeting uh, for this decision will include the mill rate impact for uh, the residents. Good, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions that we can answer tonight? Um, well, well, seeing none right now, again, please feel free to reach out. Please feel free to come to future Board of Selectmen meetings to give your comments. Um, I, thank you. To, I know that the selectmen on a rotating basis have been trying to get out to the meetings and be part of them. And, and uh, I know that they appreciate your comments. I'm sure that they'll look forward to hearing from you uh, if you are able to come in person or write. So um, thank you, everybody.
have a great night. And uh, I hope to hear from some of you who watch this a little later on soon. Good night. Good night.